Good morning and welcome to Riverside Assembly. It's good to have you with us again this morning. We're going to have a great time in the house of the Lord today. We're going to worship God. We're going to magnify his name. And we're just going to hear God's word again this morning that brings encouragement and everything else that we need. Comfort, joy, strength. It's wonderful to know that we belong to our Heavenly Father who loves us, who cares for us. So uh, we're just going to have a great time this morning. Right now, Pastor Dan's going to come and and they'll open in prayer. Thank you, Pastor Dick. Uh, we want to, uh, again, I want to say, give my welcome uh, and say thank you for coming. Uh, and we just want to lift up our service in prayer this morning. But we've also been praying for our community. And this week, we're continuing to pray for our teachers, school teachers who are having to do some really remarkable things in order to educate our children in our community. So let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would open our hearts for what you have to say to us through your word. I ask that as we praise you, as we give you glory, that you would see our praise as lovely and acceptable uh, and an expression of our hearts, because we want to praise you in spirit and in truth, Lord. God, I ask for our school teachers in our community, as we go through this uh, uh, coronavirus crisis, Lord, they have been called upon to go above and beyond what their job descriptions might say, and Lord, they are doing this for the sake of our kids. I thank you for their care, I thank you for their willingness to sacrifice and work hard, and I ask that you would bless them, give them a great imagination, and Lord, help them to be part of your hand on the lives of our kids. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to worship God together. I encourage you to gather everybody around, including your children, and we're going to praise uh, God with a, a time of worship if, uh, uh, you know, and sing right out loud because it's not quite the same. If you're just sitting there reading the words, instead, sing out loud and God will be pleased. Amen. Anytime the heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes from someone who stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve, I'll be so. I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. Anytime in weakness someone falls upon their knees, or dares to speak the truth that sets men free. Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word, I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. I see a generation standing on the truth in each and every nation. God is on the move. I see a generation standing on the truth in each and every nation. God is on the move. Anytime the gospel stirs a searching soul And someone says, send me, here I go Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move in many mighty ways Oh, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah God is on the move on the move today, I know that God is on the move, He's on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today. Hallelujah, Lord. 
be on the move in our hearts. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? That you love me? Oh, it's amazing. Sing again. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Oh, that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Oh, Lord, that you love me. I said it's amazing that I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh, and I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? That you love me? It's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. Oh, that I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh, and I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. He is God Almighty, Lord of glory. You have called me friend. I praise you, 
with everything in me. Lord, I praise you. With honor, I will sing. On you alone are holy. Only you alone are worthy. Only you alone deserve my praise. I praise you for oh, with everything in me, Lord, I praise you with honor I will sing. You alone are holy, you alone are worthy, only you alone. My praise, and so I come before you, gonna honor and adore you. You alone are worthy of my praise, only you alone. So I come before you. Honor and adore you, you alone are worthy of my praise, only you alone, only you alone.
Father God, as we have said in our praise, we surrender it all. It's easy to say with our lips, God, but it's, it shakes my heart from within. Because there are things that I still have difficulty handing over to you. But God, I know that you have my best in mind. And through you, you, you will touch me and bless me. And through that blessing, God, I will glorify you. So many times, Lord, it's easy for us to turn the, when we think of surrendering, we think of surrendering our sins, which we should do. But God, you want all of us. You don't just want the bad. You want every single part of us. The part of us that we hold on to so strongly because we think that it is the best thing that we have. God, I turn it over you. God, we turn over our needs today as well. The needs of our bodies, the needs of our hearts and minds, the needs of our community, Lord. We give them all to you. We surrender them for you to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Dick, would you come as we pray for the sick? Right now we want to... Um pray for those who are sick in body whatever it is we're thankful that we can go to our heavenly father who loves us very much today who cares about us God's word tells us to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us and he's still in a healing business today and so we come before him right now and those of you who are sick in body if you'll just reach out Reach out to, just, to God Almighty right now. Lord, we come before you, Lord, with boldness and confidence that you're able to help in a time of need. And Lord, there's a lot of needy people, Lord, all over. Lord, and we ask, oh God, that those who are in need of a healing touch, Lord, would you just let resurrection power that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, Lord, flow through every heart and every life, Lord, that needs your healing touch right now. God, I, I, Lord, I know it's happening right now. I know, Lord, because you care about us, Lord, and your word tells us that you would meet every need. Lord, it's needs today, and you see them all, Lord God. So, Lord, you're going to do something about it, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you come and intervene in our lives in every way. So, Lord, we're going to give you praise, and we're going to call it healing for every heart and every life. Healing for everyone, we're going to call it done by faith. Because we know in whom we believe, for you are truly able to do exceedingly and abundantly of all that we could ask or think according to the power that is working in us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Right now, I'm going to leave you with some, some announcements. 
Tonight at 6 p.m., there will be a congregational meeting on Zoom. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss the plans and procedures for the reopening of Riverside's building for worship services. The link to the meeting and the password are in the video description. If you have kids that are looking for something to do, Pastor Dan is reading stories on your on YouTube channel. Uh, just click and, and click the link in the video description, and you'd uh, like to, to if you'd like to listen. Don't neglect your d discipleship during this time of isolation. Gather together online with the brothers and sisters in Christ for encouragement and and growth. We have Tuesday night prayer meetings, Wednesday night Bible studies using the Zoom app. See the video description for the links, amen? If you'd like more information about small groups, Bible studies that are available, or if you are in need, please contact uh, the church office at 978-688-8777 or email to office at riversideag.com. Next Sunday, May 31st, missionary to Mozambique, Joel Charest will be ministering in our morning service. Be sure to tune in to hear what God is doing through his ministry in Africa. Praise the Lord. Pastor Dan's coming. I want to encourage you as well to tune in to that meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, the link to it is, uh, as, as Pastor Dick said, is in the uh, uh, video description. Uh, it's going to be an important uh, informational meeting. You'll be able to ask some questions about what our plans are, uh, and we'll give you more information later uh, after that. Uh, today, I want to talk to you uh, about the power of Pentecost, the power of who God wants you to be does not come from you. Uh, let me give you an example. I have uh, everybody's wearing gloves, quite often. If you took a glove by itself and whapped on, say, an egg, that egg was probably not going to break. But if you put your hand in the glove and hit that egg, that egg would go all over the place. Now, it's not the glove doesn't have the power. It's what's inside the glove that gives you the power. And the power who God wants us to be doesn't come from us. It comes from the Holy Spirit who resides in Christians. Riverside Assembly of God is a Pentecostal church. This means that we believe in a present and active Holy Spirit who still fills and empowers Christians as he did in the book of Acts. Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 2. You can pause the video and look it up if you like. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Too many times a church calls itself Pentecostal. And they, uh, a church might lay claim to the name and the heritage of Pentecost because it is a deep and rich heritage, but they do not have the power of Pentecost. Being Pentecostal is not about the name of your church. Being a Pentecostal is not about uh, uh, the church that you happen to belong to. Being a Pentecostal is a journey in your life that is lived in the power of the Holy Spirit directed and empowered to be a witness for Jesus. I don't want our church to be Pentecostal in our name only. I want us to experience the power of Pentecost, the power to be true witnesses of who Jesus is. So this morning, I want to share with you some aspects of what it means to be Pentecostal so that we might grow together into the church that God wants us to be. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would open your word to everybody's heart today as you did open my heart as I read these scriptures and help us to apply them to our lives 
so that we can become the church you want us to be. In the name of Jesus, amen. The first aspect of what it means to be Pentecostal is to be born of the Spirit. Before one can live a life in the Spirit, one must be born in the Spirit. The early disciples, think about the early disciples. They didn't just know about God. They knew God personally. Jesus was God himself in the form of a human. And these disciples knew him. They knew him personally. They walked with him. They ate with him. They argued with him. They laughed with him. They had a relationship with Jesus. Jesus was God in human form, and he revealed God's love. He revealed God's hatred of sin. He revealed God's forgiveness of that sin. And that knowledge of God transformed those disciples. It transformed their lives. These men and women who put their trust in the death and the victorious resurrection of Jesus, they put their trust in him, and this made them new. Being born of the Spirit does the same for us. If I'm going to live a Spirit-filled life, I need to start with a birth of the Spirit. In John chapter 3, verses 5 through 7, you can pause and turn to that. John 3, verses 5 through 7. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Being born of the Spirit is not just knowing about God. We don't need a church that only knows about God. We need people who know God, not just about Him. So just as physical birth introduces us to the physical world, our spiritual birth awakens us to the spiritual world. We become sensitive to the Holy Spirit and how He leads us. And we are able to receive spiritual gifts. Spiritual birth sets our relationship with God in motion. Thanks to the sacrifice of Jesus and his resurrection, spiritual birth is the first necessity in living in the power of Pentecost. A second necessity is being baptized in the Holy Spirit. All four Gospels and the book of Acts, they all give us a promise. The promise was that Hey, John baptized in water, but Jesus' followers were going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Water baptism for the early church, it was a real experience. They, they could point to the time and the place. I was baptized by John in the River Jordan. I was baptized by Philip uh, on my way back from Samaria. They could point to that specific time and place. And so the disciples would have expected the baptism in the Spirit to be the same kind of thing, a real, distinct, and evident event. 800 years before the day of Pentecost, the prophet Joel spoke of a time when God would pour out His Spirit on everybody. Look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. And afterwards... I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And the promise was fulfilled as the followers of Jesus were baptized in the Holy Spirit on that day of Pentecost. And they spoke in other languages as the spirit moved upon them. This promise continues to be fulfilled today. As men and women approach this signpost on their journey of a life lived in the Spirit, as they surrender themselves to God and seek after the Spirit's baptism. We just sang, I surrender all. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit requires an act of surrender. It requires giving our lives over to Him. This baptism in the Spirit introduced Jesus' followers to a dimension of spiritual life and power that they'd never experienced before. That exact same power that they had is available to us because it's the same exact Holy Spirit. Can you have power without Pentecostal baptism? Yes, there can be some measure of power because the Holy Spirit resides within us. But this amazing manifestation of Christ living through us is most powerful only through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If you look at the book of Acts, 
It covers about 25 years of the early church. And although tongues seem to be always present, there are lots of different ways in how that baptism took place. This tells me don't try to get God to repeat things in the exact same way. Some people say, oh, you have to be at an altar, at a church in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you have to fast before you receive the baptism. Listen, God does things the way He wants to do. He always meets His people in the now, in according to His sovereign plan. But God still, He saves, He heals, and He baptizes to bring about His will. The circumstances may be different, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit is always the same. Another aspect of the power of Pentecost is that it is the power to be a witness. God gave the disciples power to be witnesses. Immediately after the Spirit fell on that day of Pentecost and and the the disciples were baptized, they were witnesses. There were people in, in Jerusalem from all over the known world and people gathered around and they heard these people, these simple men and women, speaking in languages that was their home language from their home country. How could these men know their language? And they sh- the people that were speaking in those languages, they were sharing about the glory of God. They were witnessing of God's glory. The witness of the disciples continued after the day of Pentecost. If you look at Acts chapter 4, verse 33, it says this, With great power, the disciples continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. The church of Jesus Christ had started off with a great witness because of the power of Pentecost, and it gave them boldness and understanding, and that continued through the life of of the church. And that should be no surprise since Jesus told them about it beforehand. He told the disciples that this was the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. It says this, But you will receive power from the, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So that power, the purpose of that power was so that it's People, his disciples could be witnesses. And the purpose of that power of Pentecost is still the same today. The baptism empowers us to be witnesses. God is able to do the same thing today as he did on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit still speaks through us to bring a message of God's goodness to those around us and so that they can understand. He empowers us to be bold like Peter and stand firm for the gospel. Like Pastor Dick preached last week, we are empowered to be extensions of God's mighty hand. To be Pentecostal is to be anointed as a witness. Anointed means chosen. God has chosen us by the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be His witnesses. The baptism empowers us to fill the great commission of Jesus Christ to make disciples. Share the truth of Jesus to our neighbors. Sharing the truth of Jesus around the world. This is a hallmark of people who have the power of Pentecost. Another aspect of the power of Pentecost is believing in the power of prayer. Prayer is necessary for the power of Pentecost. The Spirit falling on the day of Pentecost was preceded by prayer. Acts 1.14 says they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They continued pressing forward, seeking after God with their petitions and saying, God, we want what you have promised to us. They were steadfast. They didn't give up, and they waited until their prayers were answered. The followers of Jesus were joined together, more than just standing around together more than even just kneeling together. They were united in their minds. They were united in their purpose. They were united in their desire. Now just suppose for a moment, what would, it, what would happen if we as a church prayed with that same hunger and unity and perseverance? I tell you what would happen. Heaven would shake from the excitement of the angels. Hell would tremble in fear, and the Merrimack Valley would receive a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we brought what God has given us to those around us. Pentecost continued through prayer. 
All throughout the book of Acts, the spirit believers, the spirit-filled believers continued to pray. Acts chapter 2 tells us that the believers continued in prayer. Acts 3 shows Peter and John praying for a crippled man. Acts 4 tells us that the meeting place was shaken as the followers of Jesus prayed together. Acts 5, the apostles pray for the sick and they are healed. Acts 6, the apostles pray over the new leaders of the church. I could do this 22 more times because every single chapter in Acts, prayer is an integral part of the spiritual walk of the followers of Jesus. You don't have to be Pentecostal to pray. But you have to pray to be living in Pentecostal power. One final aspect of the power of Pentecost that I want to mention is a life of obedience. The followers of Jesus obeyed his commands. They waited in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit. They obeyed Jesus' command to make disciples. Pentecostal power comes when we obey the word of God. Acts chapter 5, verse 32 says, We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. Someone claims to have the power of Pentecost, but they are walking in disobedience, then they are Pentecostal in name only. It's not just a baptism in the Spirit. It is a life in the Spirit. Pentecostal power is about how you live your life. Pentecostal power is not a one-time event. Pentecostal power isn't something that is just shouting at an altar or, or lifting your hands or crying in a pew. Pentecostal power is, takes place after you leave the church building and live your life out in your school, out in your playgrounds if you're kids, out in, out in your workplace, out with your family, keeping in step with the Spirit. And the Spirit always leads us to the obedience, to the plan, and to the will of God. There's a famous quote from John Wesley, who was the father of the Methodist Church. He wrote this in 1786. And he said this, I'm not afraid that people called Methodists should ever cease to exist either in Europe or America, but I am afraid lest they should only exist as a dead sect, having a form of religion without the power. People of Riverside Assembly of God, we are Pentecostal people and people, and Pentecost is about power. Not our power, but God's power, dwelling within us, used to do His will. So let us remember today those necessities of Pentecostal power. The first step was to be born of the Spirit. Whoever you are today, whether you're a child, a teen, an adult, If you have not given your life to Jesus, today can be the day. If you've not given your life to Christ and been born again in the Spirit, today can be the day. Being born of the Spirit is necessary to have the power of the Spirit. In order to be born of the Spirit, all you need to do is to accept Christ as your Savior. That means giving your life over to Him. There are easy words that you can say, but the actions can be a little scary. To give your life over to Jesus and say, the way I used to live my life is over. I'm going to follow you now, God. I believe in you and who you are. If you are willing to do that, then God has promised that you will be born again, born of the Spirit. Pentecostal power also requires being baptized in the Spirit. Seek after that second work of grace for your life. Continue your journey like the disciples until you receive the power from on high. The third necessity was to have confidence in the power of prayer. Prayer is our communication and in our fellowship with God. He supplies the power and he guides us how to use it. Fourth, exercise your power to be a witness. All around you are people who need to know the truth and the love of Jesus Christ. They could be in your school. They could be in your family. They could be in your workplace. You may have to connect with them online in order to talk to them these days. But they need to know about Jesus. A life in the Spirit will give us Pentecostal power to be strong witnesses and to share what Jesus has done for you. And finally, to live a life of obedience. Seek after God's Word so that you can learn His will. And He will give you the power to live a life that is obedient to Him. Join me in a word of prayer, if you will. Heavenly Father, I ask that we not be satisfied with our walk with You, 
but instead, Lord, that we would fulfill your call to take part in your promise to be baptized and live a life in the Holy Spirit. God, let us not grow weary in well-doing, but even in the journey to which we seek after that Pentecostal power, that you would teach us lessons along the way. Help us to surrender more of our lives to you so that we can be in a place where you are ready and able to give us the power that you have promised. Heavenly Father, for those that might be here and they don't know you and they've never given their lives over to you, Maybe they've known about you, but they don't know you. I ask today that by the Holy Spirit, you would speak to their hearts, push them, prod them. Don't let them be comfortable until they've surrendered their lives to you. I ask that you would continue to keep our church, our community safe. Help us to be wise in the decisions we make as far as when and how we once again come into this building. And until that time, Lord, help us to be the church in our community. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, I am so glad that you were able to tune in today. I ask that you uh, look at the different discipleship opportunities that we have online. May God richly bless you. Have a great week. God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.